And welcome everyone to the Coach's Corner. John Stanko being joined here by Sarah Brady, head coach of the women's soccer program. Sarah, thanks for joining us this week. Thank you. I've missed you. We missed a week, right? It's all right. We'll get right back into it here. You guys had a couple tough games against Quinnipiac and Canisius last week. And one of the common threads was struggles in the first half. Uh, the opponents jumped out early. Uh, what did you see in the first half of those two games? Well, the thing with Quinnipiac, they're a quality outfit. You know, Dave's been there a long time. I think he's 18 years now. Um, fabulous coach. And Dave's working with the national teams. He's He's brilliant. Very good recruiter, um, you know, fully funded program. So they have an advantage going in anyway. Um, they have a lot of depth, a lot of quality. But the intangibles are what disappointed me in that game. We just didn't match their intensity. It wasn't like they completely ripped us apart. It was simply they worked harder than us in the first half. Um, but the response was really, really good. You know, John and myself sat down. We said, girls, you're surrendering. Yeah, they're good, but you're focusing on all the things that they have that you don't. You're not focusing on what you need to bring. And that allowed the kids to refocus, and then they got back to 3-2. Um, last, last 30 seconds of the game, we have an opportunity to go 3-3 with a free kick. Uh, we send everyone forwards. Unfortunately, you know, we get counted, and, and Amber makes the ultimate team sacrifice, and, and she gets herself sent off. But what I was proud of her for is she recognised it was either her or our goalkeeper. So as much as we didn't want to lose Amber... She knew the importance of she needed to protect her teammate going into the Canisius game. Um, as much as I can take positives out of the Quinnipiac game in the first half and the second half, how we responded, I, I have to be completely honest in Canisius, and we were terrible. Awful. I think we were very distracted. I think the game, if you watch the first 10 minutes of the game, the game plan was working. All the kids knew it was working. Um, we didn't execute, so we didn't take full advantage. But... The most disappointing thing is, as a Division One athlete, you need a mental strength. Um, that mental strength is, I've made a mistake, but we can get over it. There's still 70 minutes left to play. And we chose not to do that. We chose to collapse like a deck of cards until we could get them again at halftime and, and basically call them out on it. Um, I'm pretty positive as a coach. I always like to focus on the positives. And I think that we've always supported this team and, and explained how young they are. But Canisius' first half was unacceptable and we called them on it. And... They came out for a great second half. You know, they, they scored a great goal. You know, they had a penalty appeal wa waved off. But they showed that real heart and fight, what we need as a programme in the situation we are. But that motivation shouldn't be external from a coach. That should be coming from an athlete. Is the mental strength and self-motivation you're talking about, is that something that you could teach as a coach or is that something as a player that you need to recruit and bring into the programme? I think that's a good question. I think it can always be, you can always go either way on it. I think your culture... So, you know, we're, we're pretty new here, myself and John. Um, it takes a little bit of a while to get your culture across. You know, you've got to really go through the experience of a season and, and see how your players respond to, to know how to really motivate them and speak to them, to push them over the edge, not to completely motivate them because that should come from themselves. So you can recruit kids with more grit and heart than other kids. Mm -hmm. um, but our job as coaches is to coach the extra portion of it it's not to completely have to motivate someone and um, I think that responsibility responsibility at this level lies with the player um, and our job is to get you over over what you think is your barrier so I think our team need to look at themselves from this season and, and understand that the mental strength is is where we're lacking the what's on our side is where young we can develop it uh, we can develop a culture that really makes sure that that's a, a big piece what we use to win in this program but I think our athletes need to take a lot of responsibility for their portion of the motivation. Well someone who was motivated against Canisius and you mentioned to me uh, off air is Mariah Elsenheimer she really stepped up and in yeah. replace of Crispin who wasn't eligible to play against the Golden Girls. Can you talk about her performance? Honestly Mariah started off the season incredibly well you know she actually started our first game she is a player with lots of talent she was kind of handicapped a little bit this season she got an injury and we've been kind of getting her back slowly um, she's been so respectful of the process of I've missed a lot through injury I'm not kind of in the fold with regards to the team at a certain point and I'm not because I haven't been able to train fully I haven't been able to play as many minutes as my you know my skill level would suggest but we had a we had a bye weekend and she was able to take a little bit of extra time and then you know it's the homecoming for her she's actually from Buffalo so she had a big posse up there to call another posse. I was like, look at all your people, Mariah. 
she stepped up big time. But I don't think it was because of the external motivation of being at home and also having all her family there to support her. I think it's just because she's a kid whose body would respond to what her heart tells it to do. You know, she was able to recover and, and she performed brilliantly. She scored a goal. She definitely should have had a penalty. Uh, she even got a yellow card, but we all got a yellow card, even me <laughs> in that game for some bizarre reason. Um, but her yellow card was for persistently harrying and harassing people and just trying to make something out of nothing. And, you know, she's, she's a kid who we have a high expectation for, but she's, she's definitely going to fulfill those expectations because her work ethic is superb. Well, we have a week and a half left in the season. You guys have a rider at home on Wednesday, and then it's senior day on Saturday with Niagara coming to town. First, the Bronx, they're upper echelon of the MAC right now. What challenges do they present on Wednesday? So I'm a massive, massive fan of Ryder. I don't think I've ever kept that a secret. Even in my previous job, I always said, I think in this conference, Ryder play the best football. I think they're incredibly well coached and the kids there are all into it. They're all really, really good footballers. I think we've got to disrupt them. I think we've got to not let them get into a rhythm. And I think we have to make sure that we do what we can to exert ourselves on the game. We can't just sit there with our white flags and say they're better than us and say they've got more this, more that. Uh, they've further developed in their culture than we are. We can't do that anymore. The, the, the time for those excuses is not now. Okay, to the end of the season, there's nothing to play for, but there is. There's build your culture, be proud of what you are putting out there and representing your school. So there's a lot we can do. I mean, Ryder are a very good team, but people have got results against them because they've highlighted the bits that they can take advantage of. And we've done that this week. Um, there's still a quality outfit. We can't change that, but we can definitely disrupt their play. And Saturday, Senior Day, we'll be honoring seniors Emily Hansen and Erica Flowers. We're not going to be able to talk to you before the game on Saturday. Can you speak a little bit about their, their, their captain and their leadership uh, in the season? So it's been a little bit harder for Erica because she hasn't been able to play. Um, but what's been nice is, I think I've mentioned on a previous um, chat that we've had, she's really took the younger kids under a, a wing. You know, young Amber is, is being mentored directly by Erica. And she's reported that she's so much more confident and feels so much a part of it because Erica's really embraced her. So she's been good with the off the field stuff. Um, but we're going to see the best of her when she comes back next year, which we're all very excited about. Um, Emily, I mean, what can you say? I think uh, there was a really famous quote I came across, and it was, treat a man as he is and he'll remain as he is. Treat a man as he should be and he'll become what he should be, and, and that's Emily. You know, I came into the programme. She was one of the first people I called when, when I uh, got the job, and I was like, just want to meet you, just want to say hi, just want to say I'm excited to be your coach. And that kid basically interviewed me. She's like, we need this, we need that, this needs to do this. And I was like, the passion and the commitment from that kid, I've got to give her a responsibility. I've got to work some form of leadership role in because I believe she has potential. Um, and she far exceeded those expectations. I think on the pitch, she's been our best player by a mile and that's no disrespect intended to our other players who are talented, but that kid's gone above and beyond. Um, she's not only been better herself, this is a most uh, a, a year has been the highest stature she's had. I mean, she's been fantastic. Um, but she's made other people better. And I think that's what a real leader does. And I honestly couldn't have asked for anything else from the kid. And we're going to greatly miss her. The team are not going to be the same without her. But what I'm really hoping is the team learn from the example she set and use that as a springboard to we need to be better because as much as that kid has been outstanding this year, one player can't carry a team. So I'm hoping she inspires two, three, four people to step up in the manner that she did this year. Well, let's hope the team plays expire for this last week and a half. And Sarah, thanks once again for joining us. Thank you.